practices by the Jubilee team may have been based on the assumption that government operations would kick off smoothly under the new administration. Well, the last three months have been anything but smooth for the new regime. Katen's Rita Tinina now looks back on what officials insist were teething problems. <laughs> When Uhuru Moigai Kenyatta took over the reins of power on the 9th of April 2013, it was on the back of lofty promises and heightened expectations from his supporters. The pair of Uhuru Kenyatta and his deputy William Ruto were soon to start putting in place a government to steer Jubilee's ambitious agenda. It is indeed our intention to put in place a cabinet that has the capacity to deliver not just on the manifesto, but to deliver on the promise of a transformed nation. In Parliament, the Jubilee side has largely had its way, thanks to its numbers, but it has not been all rosy for the young administration. Just days into office, the Jubilee government got a taste of what to expect, and it came from some of its foot soldiers, members of Parliament. MPs were up in arms over a move by the Salaries and Remuneration Commission to set their salaries at just over 530,000 shillings. In a show of defiance, the MPs voted unanimously to degazette the new salaries. The move was met with firm resistance from the public, including dramatic street protests dubbed Occupy Parliament. But the MPs had their eyes trained on the Sarah Serem Commission. I have started the process of removing that commission out of office. After weeks of a stalemate, MPs arm twisted the SRC and secured a tax-free car grant and extra allowances. <laughs> Teachers, it appears, picked the cue from MPs. <laughs> The teachers' strike called by the Kenyan National Union of Teachers, now in its fourth week, is the latest headache for the government. Not even a plea from the president, a warning from the Education Cabinet Secretary, and a court order have served to get the teachers back to class. NAT, which is demanding the full implementation of commuter, medical, and house allowances under a 1997 deal, has rejected a government offer on commuter allowances, vying to continue with its strike until the government puts a better offer on the table. The strike is fully in force. But MPs and teachers are not the only ones giving the government money troubles. Nurses, too, have a similar prescription. County representatives managed to secure a deal that will see them take home about 200,000 shillings, but at an extra cost to the taxpayer. The government is increasingly finding it hard to meet the demands, saying the wage bill is not sustainable. We must remember that our sectoral demands as counties, as interest groups, as trade unions and so on, have a direct impact on other sectors of our country. Aside from money matters, insecurity has dampened what would otherwise have been Jubilee's honeymoon period. From the Bungoma attacks, in which more than a dozen people were killed, to clashes in parts of Northeastern. In Mandera and Wajir counties, the Gare and Degodia clans have engaged in an on and off conflict that has left at least 88 people all dead, dozens more injured and hundreds displaced from their homes. And the government is still looking for the formula to tackle insecurity in the country. I wish to assure all Kenyans that I will not rest until every Kenyan feels safe. The takeoff of the devolved system of government, too, has not been smooth. From supremacy battles between governors and county commissioners to protests by governors over what they term as underfunding by the central government, the new system of government may have hit some turbulence with claims that Uhuru's government is frustrating devolution. The president was forced to meet governors and in a move seen as an attempt to appease them, ordered that they be issued with diplomatic passports and special vehicle number plates. As the country seeks the right footing on the path to devolution, Uhuru Kenyatta's key pledge, okay. laptops for schools, hasn't okay. exactly been a click away. The project, that is to cost the government at least 53 billion shillings, has become a punching bag for government critics who dismiss it as too ambitious, especially at a time when teachers are on strike over pay. 
the government has defended the plan, saying it is part of a bigger development program. Out of the 53 billion, 15.4 billion will go towards provision of electricity in 12,000 schools. The Jubilee government has a few things to its credit, such as free maternity services in public hospitals and the early signs of openness in government. But with public expectation growing by the day, the next 100 days are likely to present an even more crowded agenda for Uhuru's government. Drita Tinina, KTN.